Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt God's name together. For God is good and his mercy endureth through all generation. I want to thank you for worshiping with us this morning. I am Pastor Prelo, the pastor of Christ United Methodist Church. And whether you are with us on YouTube, you have joined us on Facebook, or you are are on our Zoom. I thank you for being here with us this morning. I pray this morning you will be blessed by our worship service. Amen and God bless you.
Good morning. Let us pray. Whenever I am tempted, whenever clouds arise, when songs give place to sighing, when hope within me dies, I draw the closer to him. For care, he sets me free. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Almighty God, we thank you for our lives. We give you praise for the abundant mercy and grace we receive each day. We thank you for your faithfulness, even though we are not always faithful to you. Lord, we ask that you give us peace in our minds, bodies, souls, and spirits. We want you to heal and remove everything that is causing stress, grief, pain, and sorrow in our lives. Dear Father, we're in need of your peace and truth to soothe our hearts and spirits right now. When we find ourselves awake in the middle of the night, our pressing needs and worries can oftentimes feel overwhelming. We need to be reminded of your constant love, your healing, and your grace. We ask for your mighty power to surround us right here, right now. Please, Lord, guide our paths through life and make our enemies be at peace with us. Let your peace, Father, reign in our families, at our places of work, at the grocery store, anywhere we travel, Lord, and in everything we lay our hands on. Let your angels of peace go ahead of us when we go out and stay by our side when we return. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Please hear our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. We want to first thank you for what you have already given to this ministry. And we want to thank you for just sowing a seed into this ministry. And we thank God because ministry still goes on. We thank God for our outreach ministry that's still out in the community and making that impact for the kingdom of God. Here at Christ United Methodist Church, there is four ways in which you can give. You can go to our website at www.christumc2113.org. That's www.christumc2113.org. You can also download the app Givelify. You can download the app Givelify on your smartphone and look for Christ United Methodist Church Baltimore City. You can also text to give. You can text the word give, that's G-I-V-E, to 410-632-6452. Again, text the word give to 410-632-6452. And also, there is still snail mail. You can still use mail. You can... Um, Mail your check to 2005 East Chase Street, Baltimore, Maryland, 21213. That's Christ United Methodist Church, 2005 East Chase Street, Baltimore, Maryland, 21213. And you can write your checks out to Christ United Methodist Church. We thank you already 
for your giving. Let us pray. God, we just thank you, God, for the many gifts in which you have already given us. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus, we here at Christ United Methodist Church, that we will be good stewards over that which you have trusted in our hands. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that it be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom here on earth. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Good morning. It's good to have you with us this morning. Whether you are with us on Zoom, you are with us on Facebook, 
or you are joining us on YouTube. It is good to have you with us here this morning. And if you are joining us on Facebook, why don't you share, share our worship services with your, um, with your family, share, share it with your Facebook community, share our worship services. And if you are on, um, if you are on um, YouTube, share the link with your family members and have them to join us for worship as well. It is preaching time. It is preaching time. And the word of God will come from 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, verse 1 through 10. That's 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, verse 1 through 10. And the word of God reads as thus. It is necessary to boast. Nothing is to be gained by it. But I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. This is Paul speaking. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool or I will be speaking the truth, but I refrain from it so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me. Even considering the exceptional character of the revelations, Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. My brothers and sisters, verse nine says, and he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. This morning, I'm going to preach from the topic, God's grace is enough. God's grace is enough. God's unmerited favor is enough. God's grace is enough. My brothers and sisters, we realize that there are some ups and downs to walk in this thing called life. And just because we come into the household of faith, it does not mean that we are immune to trouble because trouble is a part of life. The Bible says man born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. We are not immune to trouble. The challenge becomes, how do we deal with the trouble? How do I handle the difficult moments in life? How do we deal with the issues of life? How do we deal with the inconveniences of life? How do I handle my problems? How do I handle moments when it, when it appears as though there is no end to my problem? How do I handle the times when it seems like I am doing all that God required of me and there is trouble all around me? How do I handle the times when opposition seems to be coming from everywhere. I don't know about you, but have you ever been there when it seems like opposition is coming from everywhere? How do I handle the times when I am being misunderstood and misjudged? How do I handle the times when divorce hits my door? How do I handle the times when I'm faced with unemployment? How do I handle the times when depression has threatened to take me down? 
how do I handle the times when the trouble in my life is just driving me crazy and mentally I am drained? How do I handle those times? How do I handle the times when it appears as though God is not answering my prayers? How do I handle those times, my brothers and sisters, when what I'm going through is threatening to make me angry, is threatening to make me bitter, is threatening to make me hateful, is threatening to is is threatening my character, is 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 threatening to destroy who I am and make me someone I do not want to be. Paul said it best when he said, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing that I hate. How do I handle those times? For there are times, my brothers and sisters, when the pain of dealing with hurt and disappointments in our lives make us makes us bitter. It becomes unbearable and we wonder if we can take it any longer. There are times when we go through things that will challenge our faith. It will challenge who we are and who we say we are. How do we handle those times? We live day by day with our minds sometimes in a fog because we are unsettled in our spirit. How do I handle those times? Those times when we crawl to God wondering when God is going to move the obstacles that we perceive to be hindering our progress in life. How do we handle those times? And sometimes uh, there are times in our lives uh, when we think, why is life so unfair? Why is it that things do not always go the way that I planned? Why is it that things do not always go the way in which I've prayed and asked God for? How do I handle the disappointments when it seemed like even God has disappointed me? Every time you turn around, something is always holding you back. How do I handle the pain and disappointments of life? My brothers and sisters, in the 12th chapter of the book of Corinthians, Paul gives an account of his life at its highest and at its lowest. Because there are times in our lives when we feel like we are on the mountaintop, but there are times in our lives when we feel like we are in the valley. Paul stated Paul started the chapter talking about a man that was caught up in the third heavens. He gives an account of this amazing experience that he himself had talking of himself in the third person. Paul Paul said 14 years earlier, he had a vision. And and in that vision, he was caught up into what he called paradise. He heard things that, that, that are not to be told that no mortal is permitted to repeat. I'm sure that was a good time in Paul's life. And then immediately, my brothers and sisters, after speaking of his highest moment, he began to speak of his lowest moment. A situation he refers to as a thorn in my flesh. A thorn in my flesh, a a, a sharp affliction, a a, a discomfort and acute irritation. Paul was going through something in his life that irritated him so much. It it irritated Paul so much uh, that he called it a thorn in his flesh. My brothers and sisters, nobody knew or nobody know what Paul's affliction was. Nobody knew what Paul's thorn was except Paul and God. Theologians have argued for centuries uh, trying to figure out the cause of Paul's thorn in his flesh. (coughs) Some have argued that Paul was faced with physical weariness. Maybe he was challenged by opposition could have had poor eyesight or maybe stricken with malaria. Nobody know what Paul was going on was going through. We can only speculate what God what what Paul was going through. We do not know what it was Paul was dealing with 
at the time, but whatever it was, it bothered him so bad that he took it to the Lord three times. Not one time, but three times. My brothers and sisters, have you ever had something in your life that you took to God and you cut you 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 kept taking it to God and you kept taking it to God and you kept taking it to God? God, if you will only relieve me from what I'm going through, Paul took it to the Lord three times. Paul had gone through hard times before, but it was something about this time. Paul knew what it felt like to be hungry. He knew what it felt like to be thirsty. He knew what it felt like to be without clothes, to be homeless and criticized and abandoned and talked about. Paul knew what it felt like, my brothers and sisters, to have trouble on every leaning side. He knew what it felt like to be perplexed and persecuted and forsaken and cast down and pushed to the limit and afflicted and robbed and weary and put into prison and beaten and stoned and shipwrecked. Paul knew what it felt like, my brothers and sisters, because he had been through some storms in his life. He was forsaken by his friends, suffered at the hand of those uh, who was in the church and, 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 and those who were outside of the church and my brothers and sisters, uh, some of the churches that Paul had established uh, had turned uh, their back on him. They had turned away from him in rejection. And when we read chapters 10 through 13 of 2 Corinthians, we notice that Paul was under attack. He was, he was hurt and insulted as never before. His appearance, his speech, his apostleship, his honesty had been under attack. But it appears as though nothing he suffered up to this point bothered Paul as much as this situation that Paul called a thorn in my flesh. Let me say that again. It appeared as though nothing up to this point bothered Paul as much as this situation that he called a thorn in my flesh. And Paul wanted God to, to take it away. The Bible says three times I appealed to the Lord about this, uh, that it would leave me. My brothers and sisters, uh, have you ever been through some things uh, in your life and you prayed uh, for God? to take it away. Take it away, Lord. Take it away. Have you ever been through some things that you cried and you asked God to take it away? Have you ever been through some things and you knew that this time was the moment when your problems would take you out? You had it on your mind all day long. You cried to God all night long. Couldn't shake it. Tried to get rid of it and you wanted God to take it away. Take it away, God. Take it away, God. I can't handle what I'm going through. And like Paul, you said, I can't handle what I'm going through. It's a thorn in my flesh. And you wanted God to answer your prayers. Have you ever been through some things in your life and you pray to God three times? God, take it away. The Bible says that the Lord answered, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. And that's good news this morning, because when I'm weak, God is strong. When I'm at my lowest, God is at his best. When I'm going through something, God is right there with me. For yea, through I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. And my brothers and sisters, I like that the Bible says, yea, do I walk through the valley of shadow of death? Because what it does not say is that I'm getting stuck in the valley. What it's saying 
out of favor. See, it's not something that you can pay for or work for or borrow. God's unmerited favor. It's like someone who, who receives an unmerited honorary degree and they did not work for it or earn it. It was given without the, the usual requirements and duties or privileges. It's just that. It's unmerited. And I thank God for God's unmerited favor. I ain't did anything or I haven't did anything in my life to deserve it. Not that I'm so good. Not that I've got all my eyes. Not that I cross all my T's. But it's God's unmerited favor in my life. My grace is sufficient for you. The Lord said, my grace uh, is sufficient for thee, for my strength uh, is made perfect uh, in your weakness. Uh, my brothers and sisters, if you're weak this morning, uh, I want to let you know uh, that God, uh, that God's strength uh, is made perfect uh, in your weakness. Uh, God's sustaining power uh, is made perfect uh, in your weakness. Uh, sometimes, my brothers and sisters, uh, God don't spare us uh, from the hurt uh, and the pain, but he gives us the ability to go through and the ability to overcome it. My grace is made sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. It was God's grace that saw you through the other trials and tribulations in your life. And it's God's grace that will see you through what you're going through right now. In other words, words, Paul, remember that time when you were in jail and you survived, that was grace, remember that time when you received 40 lashes and you survived, that was grace, remember that time when you was beaten with a rod and you survived, that was grace, remember that time when you were stoned and you survived, that was grace, remember that time when you were shipwrecked huh, and you survived huh, that was grace huh, suffered danger huh, and opposition huh, and you survived huh, that was grace huh, many sleepless nights huh, and you survived huh, that was grace huh, hunger huh, and thirst huh, going without food huh, but you survived huh, that was grace huh, no clothes on your back huh, but you survived huh, that was grace huh, Paul remember huh, the things you went through huh, and you survived that was grace, huh? my brothers and sisters. Huh? Remember the time huh? when you thought huh? you were going to lose your mind, huh? but you did not. Huh? That was grace huh? when it seems like huh? you can't make huh? the ends meet huh? and somehow huh? you make it huh? on next to nothing. Huh? That was grace huh? when our bodies huh? are telling us huh? to rest, huh? but the demands of family huh? tell us huh? that we got to keep pushing. Huh? That's grace huh? when you're single mother and you got to, my brothers and sisters, huh? you got to work huh? to make the ends meet huh? all by yourself huh? and God provide. Huh? Oh, that's grace. Huh? The times huh? when you were sick huh? and you knew huh? that it was God huh? who poured you through huh? and I see you huh? and you made it through. Huh? That was grace. Huh? The time huh? when the doctor huh? gave you seven months to live huh? and six years later, huh, you are still here. Huh? Oh, huh, my brothers and sisters, huh? oh, that is grace. Huh? That is God's grace huh? pulling you through huh? when you find yourself huh, in a car accident huh, that should have killed you huh? and you survive. Huh? That was grace huh? when you could have walked out huh? and you probably should have walked out, huh? but because of the way huh, that people had pushed you to the limit huh? and you survive huh? emotional bank Oh, but that was grace, huh? and God's grace huh? carried you through. Huh? God's supernatural power huh? gave you the strength huh? to handle the things huh? you thought that you could not handle. Huh? Oh, that was grace. Huh? Oh, God's power huh? gave you the ability, my brothers and sisters, huh? to suffer through huh? the hard times, huh? the power huh? to walk through huh? the hard times. Huh? That was grace, huh? the power. Huh? To stand strong huh, in the midst of what you're going through. Huh? Oh, that was grace. Huh? For God's strength huh, is made perfect huh, in our weakness. Huh? For it is when huh, we are weak 
enough. God's grace is sufficient. And I give God glory this morning. Somebody ought to stand on their feet wherever you are and say hallelujah. God, I thank you. I give you the glory and I magnify your holy name because you're worthy. I said you're worthy. I said you're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be praised. My brothers and sisters, no matter what it is that you're going through this morning, I want to let you know that God's grace is sufficient for you. For God's power is made perfect in weakness. In our weakness, that means when I'm at my lowest, God is at God's strongest in my life. When you're at your lowest, whew, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah this morning. When you're at your lowest, let me tell you, it is God. You might not see it, but guess what? It is God that's keeping you. It is God that's waking you up in the morning. It is God that's giving you the strength to go through your day. And those little encouragements that you get through the day where people call you up and they say, you were on my mind and I just called because you were on my mind and I'm just calling to see how you're doing. Guess what? That's God's grace showing up in your life when you're down to your last dime and you get a cash app. Your cash app bell go off and somebody just sent you 50 and a hundred dollars and they said, I was thinking about you. That's God's grace operating in your life. When you go to bed at night and you don't think you're going to wake it or you're going to make it until the morning and you wake up and it's six o'clock in the morning and the sun is coming up. God, let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, that's God's grace operating in your life. When you go to the doctor and the doctor give you a bad report and six months later, the thing that they saw on the image, they don't see no more. That's God's grace. And my brothers and sisters, you might say, pastor, I'm going through some things and I don't know what it is that I'm going through. And I don't think that God is going to pull me through what I'm going through. Let me tell you that's God's grace is going to take you through what you're going through. God's unmerited favor, not because you dotted all your eyes, not because you crossed all your T's. Guess what? Because God loves you just that much. Because God loves you just that much. God loves you so much that the Bible says that he sent his son to the cross to die for me and you. God loves you just that much. Guess what? God loves you so much that God knew that whatever it is that you're going through, that you would not be able to handle it. God knew that. And guess what? God sent his son, Jesus, to Christ on the cross to die for my sins and to die for your sins. That's grace. That's God's grace. Grace hung up on the cross for me and for you. That's God's grace. That's God's grace. My brothers and sisters, if you're under the sound of my voice this morning and you don't know Jesus as the prophet, priest, and king of your life, you don't have a relationship with Jesus the Christ. He's not, he, he's not guiding you in your life. He's not number one in your life. You're not consulting him for when you go through things and, and you're traveling through life by yourself. My brothers and sisters, I want to offer you Jesus this morning. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that God did something about it. God so loved the world that God gave God's only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through his son might be saved. When I look at that scripture and it says might be saved in some translations, I look at that and say it says might be saved because you got to receive the salvation that God is offering you. 
You have to receive that. God sent not his son in the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. My brothers and sisters, that the world through him might be saved. I want to offer you salvation this morning. You don't have to go through life by yourself. You don't have to go through it by yourself. He walks with you and talks with you and gives you the assurance that you are his own. If that's you this morning, I want to offer you Christ this morning. Let us pray. God, it's in your name that we come. We come to Heavenly Father in your name. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of your Son, the one who died on the cross for our sins. We come in Jesus' name this morning. God, I pray for that person under the sound of my voice that do not have a relationship with you, God. They don't know you through your Son, Jesus the Christ. I pray for that person this morning, God, that they will come to know you in a real and awesome way. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus for that person under the sound of my voice, God, that they receive your son, Jesus, to Christ this morning, God. I come to Heavenly Father that they may come. I ask the Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus that they may come crying out, what must I do to be saved? I pray for that person this morning. If that's you under the sound of my voice, I'm praying for you this morning that you will come to know the Lord. The Bible says... That with the mouth we confess and with the heart we believe unto salvation. And we do that by faith. By faith. We walk by faith. The Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. The substance of things hoped for. Put your hope on faith this morning. And let Jesus the Christ guide you, my brothers and sisters. And if you want to receive Christ this morning, my brothers and sisters, and that's you and you say, Pastor, I want to receive Christ in my life. As I said, the Bible says you just make an open confession. Just confess with your mouth. Just say it out loud no matter where you are. God, I want to receive Jesus. Because with the mouth, we make a confession. And with the heart, we believe. And if that's you and you're saying, say, just say it out loud to God. God, I want to have a relationship with Jesus the Christ. And when you do that, my brothers and sisters, you're saved. I pray for that person. If that's you, I want you to just write in the comments, I want to connect and we will get in touch with you. Just write in the comments, I want to connect. And, or, or you can call our, our, our church at 410-732-5600. Call the church and somebody will give you a call back. Leave your name and leave your number. Or you can email the church at cumchurch at verizon.net. That's c-u-m-c-h-u-r-c-h at verizon.net. Amen. God bless each and every one of you this morning. My prayer for you as we dismiss this morning is that you just remember that God's grace is sufficient. No matter what it is that you're going, you're going through this morning, that God's grace is sufficient for whatever it is that I'm going through. God's sustaining power is with me. As I go. Now may the love of God and the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with you today, henceforth, and forevermore. All the people of God say amen. Let the church say amen. God bless you.